There we go. Okay. That was a um, that was a little iffy for a second there. Can we? Ooh, yeah. Okay, we got it. Oh, we got this. No, maybe we don't. Uh, we're good. Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to start taking steps towards uh, moving into oil. Um, but uh, before we get started with that, I just wanted to um, go over our final advanced steel production line here. Uh, I finally have it up and running, and man, was it ever a lot of work. So I guess the best thing to do is to work backwards. And so we've got our assembler over here uh, making motors and uh, it's uh, not ev everything's not quite at full capacity all the buffers aren't completely filled up yet so it's still uh, waiting on rotors but that will eventually uh, take care of itself uh, we do need to put a storage um, a storage container for all of this stuff so let's go ahead and just put this here one of the things I'd like to think about doing to at some point is to, is to have our um uh what am i trying to say have a a, a, a storage room um so oops okay that's not quite quite right oh uh, let's see grab those guys again just put one right there temporarily in case i screwed up all right so we want you to be Right about here, I guess. Um, yeah, that looks right. There we go. Okay. Um, and we now have motor production going, which is amazing. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Just to kind of... I know I kind of went over the plan with you guys in the last episode. Um, but... You know, God, uh, we plan, and, or man plans and God laughs, or however that saying goes. I know I just totally butchered it. Anyway, um, so, yeah, this is uh, set up to, to do motors, of course, and it so it requires two rotors per minute and two stators. Uh, I'm sorry, ten rotors per minute and ten stators per minute. Um, so I have the stator production uh, down below, and I ended up putting the rotor production up above just because I was having space issues. Um, the problem... I could have maybe squeezed the rotor production in over here, but the problem is it won't let me build anything right here because our hub is right down below. So it uh, I, that's just not going to happen without moving the hub. Um, so, yeah, so I ended up moving the rotor production up above there. Okay, so anyway, stator is, production is down below, so we've got two assemblers. Um, uh, producing five stators per minute because we need to take 10 in here like so okay and then so each one of these guys uh, needs 40 wire per minute and 15 steel pipe so basically for the two of them we need 30 steel pipe and 80 wire um, these guys are making wire and I have three of them set up and they're just slightly underclocked. I was thinking about put setting up two and overclocking, but I decided to set up more and, and underclock instead, um, just to save our you know our power shards. Uh, so this one's doing 13 per minute. This one is doing 13 and a half per minute, and this one is also doing 13 and a half uh, per minute. Or uh, that's on the input on the 20. I should be actually looking at the output. Sorry about that. Uh, so the output's 27 per minute. This should be also 27 per minute. And then this one should be 26 per minute. Okay, so that gives us a total of 60, 74 plus 6 is um, is 80. Okay, so and then all, everything is manifold. I pretty much use manifold for just about all the builds that I do. Um, and so now we have 80 copper wire going into these two assemblers for our 40 per okay uh, and then over here we've got oh and I set up a refiner here um, I actually overclocked this refiner because I needed a total of 40 per minute uh, so we did uh, overclock that in order to feed these three guys which require um, 26 per minute 27 per minute and 27 per minute and that all comes out to 
um, that comes out to 80. Okay? Um, so, I'm sorry, wait a minute. You're producing 40 per minute, and you are consuming, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the wrong damn thing. 13 per minute, 13 and a half per minute, and 13 and a half per minute. So all of that comes out to 40. Um, because 13 times 3 is 39, and then 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1, so 40. Okay, so that takes care of all of that. Um, the copper that's coming into here, I just tapped off of that second um, copper mine that we set up uh, several episodes ago. Uh, not that one down there, but the one that's a little further back, and we still have plenty of uh, copper to feed everything. Okay? Uh, and I ran that underneath the floor right here. So that line's just, it kind of comes around and then everything's nice and neat along the ceiling up into here. So that uh, takes care of the copper. Uh, the steel pipes is, is super easy. We basically have, we, we continue just to tap into um, this other production line over here that's making encased industrial beams because we still had lots of ore left over uh, to play with. Um, and then, so we ran our, our attached rather a fifth foundry um, and this is producing 45 steel ingots per minute and that's being fed into this constructor which is overclocked in order to produce 30 per minute so you can see it takes 45 so it's an even exchange on the input this is outputting 30 per minute and then each one of these rod machines requires um, whoops I'm looking at the wrong thing the rod machines are over here. what did I do with my rod machines that's the wire machine. Oh no, the this I'm sorry. The steel pipes are going directly into to these two guys because they each need 15. So yeah, okay. And that takes care of the stator part of this. Now let's take a look at the rotor part. Um, so as you can see, uh, what I ended up doing is I ran a, a copper line into here uh, off of one of my miners down below. Uh, so so I have two miners, well, I actually have four miners down there, but two of the miners I had merged into here, um, but this whole line here uh, along with this is consuming like th three or less than 240. Um, and so that entire miner um, can support this entire line. So I took the other miner and ran its line up here for our rotor production. Um, but it is currently, it actually needs to be underclocked. It's only consuming 150 ore per minute and it's trying to feed it 240. So um, let's go actually down and do that right now. Well, here, I'll show, I'll show you why first of all. So let's go back up here. All right, so each one of these guys are taking in uh, 28 per minute. They're just slightly underclocked so that the output's correct. So that's 28 per minute. This one's 28. That one's 28, and this one's 28, okay? So if we multiply that times 5, um, 28. Oh, this might screw up my recording. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay, I just have to hit the right asterisk button. Times 5, that comes out to 140, actually, is what we need, not even 150. So what we want to do is we want to downclock the miner down below to match 140 per minute, just so we're not using more power than we need to, and everything is 100% efficient there. Okay, so let's go out here, and we want to come down to this miner here uh, because that's just going in there and it's running along so it comes in right here and it runs along this conveyor line to here and then the lift takes it up that way so our target is 140 and then you know later on if we add more stuff then we can of course bump it back up as needed um, it's the other thing we could do too. I mean, 
We could set this back to a Mark 1 miner and overclock it. If we did that, um, how much power is this consuming right now? So it'll it'll consume... It's consuming 12 megawatts, but if we down clock this to 140... Let's see what it does now. Oh, now it's down to 5 megawatts. See, that's a huge power savings there. Um, or we could put a Mark 1 and then overclock it by 20, but I, I want to say that's probably might end up actually being a little more expensive to do it that way. So I think we're just going to leave it as it is right now. And then this outputs 140 per minute. The other advantage to leaving it as it is is because, again, like I said, if we want to add more later, um, you know, everything's already in place. We just need to adjust the clock speed again. And it saves a power shard on top of all that. Okay, cool. So let's go back up here. So we got that set to feed 140 per minute. Um, all of my lines coming in, um, at least until we get up to, to here, well, even with there, are Mark 3s to support that. Because um, it's just above 120, so we couldn't use Mark 2s. So now these guys should be getting the exact amount of ore <coughs> excuse me, um, <clears throat> that they need. Um, I still have some kind of backup going here and I haven't figured that out yet I gotta I gotta I gotta look at it, at it. but I, I want to let it run for a little while just you know so it's running at full capacity uh, all the buffers are full and then I'll have to look at it and see what's going on uh, maybe we can figure it out as we go through here okay so we've got um, then a total of uh, 28 um, per minute or so yeah, we got we have a total of 140 ingots per minute coming out of there all right and so now this guy is making screws so it's taking 12 and a half per minute this is taking making screws at 50 12 and a half per minute and I've got four of those running so that's a total of 200 screws per minute that this is producing none of these are overclocked they're just running at normal speed and those 200 screws are coming out of here and then manifolding into these two uh, rotors, uh, I'm sorry, not rotors, uh, assemblers, which both require 100 screws per minute. Okay, so that's set up good. And um, the belt system that's feeding that is, so, so 50 is going along on a Mark 1, then we have 100 going along on a Mark 2. That is a Mark 2, right? And we have 150 going along on a Mark 3. And that's Mark 3 all the way here. Then we drop off 100. And then this is a Mark 2 sending 100 over to this side. Okay, so that should be correct. On the screws. Um, and on the input for the screws, again, um, we're basically feeding 50, a total of 50 ingots into these four machines. Because they each take 12 and a half in. Um, okay, so now we come over here and we have the rod machines. Um, so this one's taking in 13 per minute, this one's taking in 13 per minute, and this one's taking in 14 per minute. All that together uh, should come out to 40. Uh, yeah, it does. 13 plus 13 plus 13 would be 39. Add one more is 40. Okay, so we have a hunt. So these are consuming a hundred ingots these four um, no they're consuming 50 right 12 and a half 50 and then these are consuming 40 so that's where the backup is I'm I actually added way too many constructors to this or uh, uh, too many of these okay well at least I figured figured it out I must have gotten my wires crossed so I'll have to Let's see, 50 and 90. So, so we're consuming 90. And I have it set up for 140. Okay. Um, that's why these are backed up. Okay, so I'm going to have to remove two of these. And just put these at normal clock speed so three of them together will produce the 90 that we need. 
All right. Yeah, I definitely screwed that one up, but at least that we figured out why. So probably the way I'll do that is I'll, I'll redo all of these so that they're evenly spaced with three, just so it looks nice. Okay. Well, we figured that one out. All right. So, um, and then, the, so the rods are, um, producing 13 per minute, 13 per minute, 14 per minute, which is a total of 40. Those are coming out of here. Everything's on mark one because nothing's exceeding 60 per minute. And then each one of these guys is receiving 20 rods per minute. Okay. And that uh, pretty much shows the rotor setup. So yeah, let's get this, uh, let's fix our, our uh, smelter situation here. So basically all we have to really do is just remove this one right yeah that one and this one conveyor lift mark here let's um let's pull all this out so we can see what the hell's going on here okay so that's not needed and that's not needed and that's not needed. So we, um, yeah, we're only actually taking in 90 and not even 140. So I guess for now, I'm going to just down clock that miner even further, but I'm going to leave it like I said, as a Mark II because, um, this can all be Mark. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, oh shit. Whoopsie. Ow. Oh, I guess that didn't hurt. I'm going to leave all this stuff for Mark III. It's not going to hurt to do that, and that way it's in place if I expand it in the future. But for here, um, we're only really working with a total of 90. So um, we want to use Mark II from here to here. Uh, oh, I guess these need... Wait, what? Why isn't that working? That should just go right on into there. Okay, hold on. That's a splitter. It should output and then input into here. Can't afford. Oh, can't afford. What are we out of? Um, oh, we're out of reinforced plates. Okay. Couldn't figure out why that wasn't working. I'm going, what the heck, man? All right, let's go get some reinforced plates here. Okay, that can go in there, and then this one is only distributing, uh, should only be distributing another 30 to there. And in fact, you know, this could actually be a Mark 1 too. There's no reason not for it not to be, because that's, that's going to be transporting 60, and then this one will be transporting 30. Okay, so that fixes stuff down there. Um, let's go ahead and put these back in place. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Okay, so now this business um, can all come out too. And same thing on this side. And then we'll just reconnect these belts so we should be golden. Um, yeah, so again, what are you outputting? Okay, how did I have this? Oh, I was coming from this side down to here. Gotcha, okay. Um, so this is going to output... Uh, yeah, 30 per minute, or 28 per minute to be precise. No, remember we have to set these back to normal, right, okay. Uh, so put these back to 100%. Okay, so now we have a total of 90. Um, so 30 will come along there. 
60 will come along here, so that could still stay a Mark 1. Uh, this only needs this needs to be a Mark 2 because it's gonna um, be carrying a total of 90. There we go. Okay. Now on our inputs back over here, we're only doing 12 and a half per minute, so this is overkill here too. Well, I think it is because we have. Yeah. Yeah. So these sh should all be able to be Mark II's and then eventually Mark I's. Okay, so we're feeding a total of 90. Um, and then we pull 12 and a half off of there, so now... Uh, now we're doing 78-ish. We're gonna pull another 12 off of here, so now we're doing 66-ish. So we still need a Mark II, and then everything else should be Mark I, um, because at this point now we're doing 54-ish, and then it just keeps taking it down from there. And this can all be just Mark I. Okay, let me just double check that. So these are, yeah, these are pulling a total of 50 ingots from the 90, and then it's still sending 40 more down here. And you're taking in 14, you're taking in 13, and you're taking in 13, which is 40, and this belt can handle that. Okay, I think we fixed that, now it's running efficiently. Whew, man, I'll tell you what. This is, uh, this gets complicated, man. It gets complex. But we finally got it done. So we have a full motor production line. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so, um, I've set up a, once again, uh, set up a temporary, um, versatile frames thing right here. Um, for the space elevator and I think we need a total of 1200 of those so let's do this um, let's just put that there for a second and I'm gonna store everything here and then let's just take all of these and we'll start loading up the space elevator it's going to be a long time though before we actually launch the space elevator, but I want to get these versatile frames in now and be done with them. Um, okay, so if we do that, that gets us to 1392, so we are uh, about halfway or so there. So we'll just let that keep running up above, and I'll check it again later. And when that's done, then this whole stuff, all of this stuff over here, you know, has, has always been a temporary setup. So I don't know if I'll keep it there. Um, I, I got really sloppy with this because I just, <laughs> I just wanted to get it busted out. Uh, you know, and, and you know, you make it, treat it kind of like, um, you know, it's a it's a versatile, ex, um, yeah, we can exchange exchangeable. I don't know, that's not the right word, but change it up. You know, if we want to make certain things. Um, using assembler and steel and stuff. So I might leave all of that stuff there and just change that the inputs on it as needed Anyway, all right, you guys so that uh, we are finally done with advanced steel production I, for, for the most part if not completely and man. Oh, man. That was a lot of work. So I Don't know at this point if I'm planning on really doing a whole lot more with this building um I haven't decided that yet, really, so. Are those guys completely full? Their meters look weird. Um, uh, the battery thing's down here. This might hurt. Nope, it didn't. They should be completely full. Oh, yeah, they're fully charged. Uh, I guess the meter's gray. I was expecting to see, like, a green or something on that. Okay. 
All right, well, um, I think our next move is uh, we need to locate oil. And so let's see, where are we at with milestones? Oh, we, okay, so we actually learned the oil milestone. I can, it's been so long since I've played, it's been at least two, three weeks. I had so much stuff going on in real life. You know, I was gone for work um, for a while. I came down with COVID. I lost my mother to COVID. She, she passed away. So just dealing with all kinds of crap right now. Anyway, um, I'm just telling you guys all that just so you know that I, my head has not been in this game. And so it's like, I'm trying to figure everything out again, essentially. Uh, okay, so we did learn oil processing. And it looks like... Um, pretty much everything else uh, we're gonna need these two things here for um, you know for the space elevator uh, which is gonna give us the four input manufacturer but we need plastic and rubber to do that um, so we have some motors there but we're gonna need the plastic and rubber to do that um, this is gonna be alternative fluid transport packaged fuel liquid biofuel I wonder what that's even used for. Who would use something like that? I don't know. Um, oh, we can do gas mass. See, now we could make this stuff just manually and, and get that done. That, that'll allow us, uh, and more inventory slots too. That'll allow us to go, you know, into those poison areas. This is going to give us um, Mark IV stuff, but they want computers, rubber, and heavy modular frames, uh, which we can't, we can't make that stuff yet. Jetpack's going to be fun, but again, it needs rubber product. So, yeah, it's going to be a while, guys, for we're, we're going to be able to do much with this stuff. Um, we're going to be in these two tiers for a very long time. Okay, well, you know how, how to eat an elephant, right? One step at a time. So let's go back to here. And I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out where the oil is. Okay, so uh, let's just run a scan here. Crude oil. This is one of the reasons why I probably will want to build our next building, our next factory, but near the oil because it's a long, quite a long ways away from this location. And it looks like the closest one is. To the north of us and we haven't really gone north either so yeah that's kind of cool because that's going to give us some um, a reason to explore to the north all right um i'm trying to think oh you know what we should do if we're gonna ha explore maybe we should build an explorer i've been wanting to do that again this whole jank thing is just temporary that's for the versatile frames so just pretend you didn't see it um i and i have a lot of work to do on the building yet too we got to get the lighting in i got to finish actually building it and then closing it and painting it and you know that is in the plans um to do anyway uh explorer can we make the explorer i haven't even looked at the mam in a million years i think in the, the explorer oh got something here um all right so crystal beacon or copper rotors which would require copper sheeting and screws or charcoal why in the hell would I want to make charcoal it's an um, alternative to coal I guess but you'd have to manually feed the wood into it yeah I don't see the point in that I don't think I don't know why in the hell I'd want to do this either. Unless beacons are... No, I don't think beacons are an intermediate product. They're an end product. So this seems to make the most sense, even though we've got all of our rotor lines already set up with the normal steel. That would be nice, though, because... Yeah, man. I mean, well... No, rotors just... Rotors just use screws and rods so the only thing you're replacing at least from a product standpoint is copper sheeting instead of the screws 
but this probably also gives you a little more per minute. I don't know. Uh, nevertheless, of these three, this is by far the best one. So that's what we're going to take. Okay, let's go back to quartz for a second. Um, so we have, um, yeah, we have unlocked the explorer. So um, we're going to need, I think we're going to, I think we built, did we build that here? Da, 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 da. No. Um, transportation. There it is. Okay. So we need five oscillators, 15 beacons, and five of those reinforced frames. We're going to have to do all that manually. Um, so let's look at the reinforced frame things. Heavy modular frames, sorry. Now to make those, we need encased industrials and... Oh, and just screws. Okay. And how many uh, did it say we needed again? Let's put this uh, on the to-do list. Um, that way, it's just right there. Oh, we only need five. Oh, shit, that's nothing. Okay. Uh, so let's... Uh, Let's get these made up. All right, cool. So let's um build our explorer. Oh yeah, there we go. This is cool looking, man. Uh, I believe this runs on biofuel. Let's take a look here. Um, well, does it? Can we run it on other kinds of fuel, or is it biofuel? I don't know. Uh, here, let me put a few things away, and then we're going to take this thing out for a spin before we wrap up the episode. Okay, let's um, throw that in there. Does that give me, like, a full tank? Health, fuel. Uh, where do I know where the fuel is? I'm not seeing any kind of a fuel gauge on this. Huh. Weird. Okay, well... Oh, I see it. Okay, yeah. It's in the in the little speedometer thing on the left. Okay, let's, uh, let's grab some more biofuel then. Maybe we'll take a couple of those with us just in case. Alright, look at this, you guys. The Explorer. Nice. I'm not sure. Um, oh, I guess we can't get it out that way, huh? <laughs> uh, ooh, we might not be able to get it out of here at all. We're going to have to figure that one out, huh? Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to need to have like a... I guess a garage or something. Uh, but obviously we can't um, drive this out of here. So we're going to have to come down to here. And then let's just rebuild it. And refuel it. Okay. So yeah, we want to we want to go north. I don't know if there's any way down. Well, we did we did kind of make that ramp, didn't we? When we first when we originally fell off the cliff, our first death of the whole series, we made a ramp over here. Yeah, right there. Um, we could probably get down there if we're super careful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I trust myself. Yeah, okay. This is really cool though, man. Seems to handle the terrain pretty good. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Okay. That was a... Um, it was a little iffy for a second there. Can we... Ooh, yeah. Okay, we got it. Oh, we got this. No, maybe we don't. Uh, we're good. Okay. Yeah, so we we really haven't been north um, at all to speak of, you know, in this series. So let's just see how we, far we can get in our new explorer here. Uh, 
I think this is part of the rocky. Oh, there's oil right there. Ah! We drove right on into it. Nice. Look at the tire tracks. So oh, they don't last very long. Get out of here. Let's get this one too. Got him. Okay. So this is an impure node. That sucks. All right, let's see. There's 121 meters, 28 and 97. That way. All right, yeah, I see the other one right over here. This is a normal, okay. Let's do another scan again. There's one that's 122 meters that way. Oh, right there. Okay. That's also an impure. Okay. I'm not sure where the the pure nodes are. Um, so we're gonna... Oh shit, where'd you come from? Didn't even see him there. Oh, he took us out. That's right, only had three health. <laughs> Oh shit. Not good. Um, yeah, not good at all. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to uh We have to get our stuff back. We should be able to get it back. I didn't make an extra thing of uh uh whatchamacallit thingies. Blade runners. Alright. I need quick wire frames and rotors. those on and uh, we're just gonna store all of this stuff here all right let's go back get our stuff and then um probably we, we probably better wrap up this episode we've gone a little bit long anyway and then in the next episode we'll we'll continue exploring uh we'll go further out and see if we can figure out where um the pure oil nodes are so yeah exploration episode coming up in the next one all right, you guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. That worked out pretty good. All right, guys, I'll see you in a bit.